Mike Lani is an artist that uses coffee to build masterpieces. He uses the strength of the coffee brew to manipulate color. From a light cream to a dark chocolate brown, Mike creates art that not only looks good, but smells even better. I had the pleasure of interviewing Mike at his home in Los Angeles. All right, so I'm here with Mike Lani. Pleasure, Mike, pleasure. How Thank are you? you? Great, man. Thank you for coming. See, if you guys don't know, this is one of the, the up-and-coming artists right now in the country. Go check them out, MikeLani.com. Yeah, MikeLani.com. Or, you know, Mike Lani Art. I mean, it, it's crazy. He does this, these things with coffee. That's his, his, his method, right? Your, yeah. your choice. How did you yeah. get started doing art with coffee? So I was, um, I was teaching an art class uh, to underprivileged kids, and I was teaching the fundamentals of art, the, you know, the, the shading from zero to black and uh, composition and all these different fundamentals, giving them the tools to make whatever art they wanted to make with all of the uh, the best tools that you know history has provided right and so we were spending all of our time for like a couple of weeks on teaching this process of shading uh, to get that dramatic light and dark and so my whole mind was around that at the time and I discovered a coffee stain on a uh, countertop somebody had just left a stain at the office and uh, I'm, I'm like staring at it like this close because I'm looking at how beautiful this gradation of color goes from this nice, beautiful light beige all the way to this super dark line on the edge of almost black. And so I just started experimenting with coffee, just taking a spoon and spilling it out and started on glass and then went to like board and um, then went to like canvas. And then at the end, I got back to Formica countertop. And I just love the way the coffee rolled over it and as the water evaporates out, it leaves these beautiful stains. Wow, so, that's yeah. great. So, I mean, how long do you think until now, which I think your stuff is really amazing. Like when you first started till now, like to, to perfect your technique, how long did it take you? I think um, it's been a it's been kind of like an experimental process for about 10 years and so um, that was 10 years ago when I start, first started just kind of playing with it uh, showing it to people having it up on my walls and then um, eventually selling it maybe about um, six years ago started actually selling it and working my way to the process and then in the last couple of years really focusing on it and um, perfecting the process and trying new things uh, different size obviously um, larger and larger scale and um, seeing what happens as uh, as I do um, things in different steps versus all at once and it's just it's like a wonderful experiment, experiment every single time with nature. Half of it is me deciding, all right, I want this to be dark over here, light over here. I want it to be balanced with the white and the dark and like have this really nice composition. But then I have to leave it. And I walk away and it's just a lot of coffee laid out on this panel. And over the course of the next day or so, all the water just evaporates out. And then I come back in and it's like, oh my God, look what you did. Look what you did, you're so beautiful. And so part of what happens is what I get to contribute to it. And then the other part of what happens is what nature gets to contribute to it because of its own processes based on how this, how the chemistry works in this substance. So it's really fun. Yeah. So it's almost like a you're, you're almost like a tool for nature yeah. to do yeah. what it does. Yeah. I get. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get to. It's like a dance, in that I get to do a piece, and then I have to give it up. Yeah. You know, like like um, and what's great is. It's, it's like, oh, I, I get to go to the studio and see what happened. I get to go and see what the, pro, like the product of this experiment, this, you know, it's been this ongoing experiment for many years and it's, um, it's really fun because what am I doing? I'm making coffee, mm. I'm in a room that yep. smells like coffee, mm -hmm. you know, like, and I love coffee. And so I'm drinking coffee, I'm spooning coffee, 
and then um, sometimes getting a little jittery. But, <laughs> but that's uh, part of the art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why it gets a wavy line sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah, when I have too much. Uh, but then, uh, but then coming back to it and kind of releasing it, and it will do stuff that I never would have thought of. It'll create patterns that I wouldn't have thought of. And so, and then during the process, one of the things that nobody gets to see is that during the process of it, it's just as beautiful as the product. Because as you drop darker and darker brews into lighter brews, the, the expansion of that sediment just kind of moves across and just does all this just beautiful stuff and I get to watch that as it's happening. That's cool. And then, and then I walk away, you know. That's cool. Is it, is it, when you're talking about brews, so you actually brew yeah. different shades for... I brew different shades, yeah. Do you yeah. use any particular coffee? Or? Uh, I use a, a lot of different... Sponsorship opportunity? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I use a lot of different kinds of coffee. Like, um, Right now I'm working on a couple of pieces, um, one of them's for a coffee company um, uh, that actually does a lot of really great public work called Thanksgiving Coffee. And um, so we, uh, we looked at those guys and they're doing such wonderful things in their community that um, we decided that we'd just give them a gift. And so we're using their coffee to make their logo and we're just sending it to them. Because, That's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, we sent them an email with a picture of it. We're like, hey, we're sending this to you. And they wrote us an email back like, oh my God, <laughs> like, what? Thanks what? for the coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look them up. So yeah, they're really Actually, that good. Actually, that sounds delicious. Yeah, yeah, they're really good guys too. And so, um, so and it's, uh, yeah, so I use a lot of different kinds of stuff, and um, which is fun for me, because I get to try a lot of different kinds of stuff. Yeah. When you're doing artwork with, uh, with paint, which I also do, I love working with paint, you don't really taste paint. You know, you know, so it's like um, it's a visual medium that you get to experience. But when you're doing artwork with something that is tasty, you get to taste it and see it and smell it and all that kind of stuff. And it creates an environment that is um, non-toxic. Yeah. So the actual working environment is so much nicer as an artist to work in something that like coffee. That's pretty yeah. cool. I'm actually yeah. thinking about doing art with beans. Do you mm. think that's gonna work with actual refried beans? With refried, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, like my <laughs> that might be a little toxic. You though. might. Well, no. You know what? Uh, cook it down. Like you know, um, in cooking, there's a there's a term a reduction. Okay. Maybe yeah. If you get the uh, if you get it, <laughs> I'm yeah. kidding. But now yeah. I'm actually serious. <laughs> now that you're giving me some yeah. tips, I'm making, yeah, 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 if yeah, I yeah, reduce get it, to, yeah, yeah, you get to get it. Yeah, sour get it cream and, yeah, sour and beans. Cream. It's just such a delicious painting. May, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is actually something really deep, what you made me think of. I was just thinking, wow, I wonder how that would smell after three or four days. <laughs> but um, one of the really funny things that happened, I had a big show, and um, somebody came up to me and was like, Hey, man. Um, people are sniffing your work. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because they smell like coffee for a little while. You know, even you, I give them a, a layer of resin, they last, I've got ones that are 10 years old now, they're perfect, you know, I give them this layer, but they do smell like coffee for a little while after they're done. And so I started going and looking at the pieces and they have this, you know, this beautiful kind of glassy surface with nose prints. <laughs> and so there were nose prints and I'm like watching and people are walking up and like sticking their nose against the piece and I was like this is the greatest thing yeah like this I like I didn't know I was an interactive artist yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean but it sounds like almost like the natural thing to do is like whoa that you know and, and I think that's great about the art as well because it's not just something that you look at it's something that's that, that you can feel yeah. you know that that smell and the texture and, and all of that so Speaking of coffee, you know where you know there's so many blends of coffee nowadays. It's not like before it was just used by coffee. Right. Now it's you know uh, Arabica beans, Colombian. Yeah. Um, yeah. What what's from your what you've learned? What what's the coffee that's like the original coffee? Like where's yeah. So it's really interesting. Like like this is uh, part speculation based on history and and them tracking back like. All right, so coffee started really getting big here. Where did it come from? And then where did it come from? And where did it come from? And it seems like 
It was. It came from. Um, it, the, there's a lot of evidence for it coming from uh, Ethiopia, mm -hmm. which uh, which is really cool because if you track it all the way back, it's that's one of the major centers of original civilization, and. Um, if anybody knows the story of Andromeda and Perseus and Pegasus, the Clash of the Titans, and he has to fight the, the sea monster to save the girl who's chained up, well, Andromeda um, is an Ethiopian princess. And so it's the story of a Greek guy coming to Ethiopia and saving a princess from a dragon. That's what this thing is basically about. And um, so there's this long, rich history there and they, I think they tried to really protect coffee. It was a very sacred thing from what I've read, basically. And so coming and then coffee started moving out across the world and started being traded in Europe and, started, and then came to America. And, and like, um, what's really interesting about it is it's so ubiquitous and it's something that people in every culture all over the world share. And so it's, it's one of those things that um, we may fight about religion and culture and war and all this kind of stuff, but everyone in the world sits down for a cup of coffee. Yeah, you know? it's, it's unifying. So, yeah, it's unifying. It's like, and so we use it in you know, our desserts, we use it in our food, we use it, we have it for breakfast, we have it for lunch, we have it late night, you know. My, uh, my best friend is Cuban and they have their little Cuban coffee oh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's small. their way. And then you go and then in Turkey, they have Turkish coffee and they read, you know how in some cultures they read the tea leaves? Yeah. For, well, uh, the Turkish coffee, they read the coffee grounds at the bottom. Oh, wow. And so the way the patterns lay, much like what I'm doing, the way the patterns lay is how you tell the fortune. Wow. And so this is kind of like a big version of of that ancient, um, what do you call it, tradition of learning and looking into the, this natural fall of sediment to see something in it. Almost yeah, like spiritual a spiritual yeah, kind of connection yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. And then what about with, with the whole climate change and, and all mm -hmm. of this going on, is that affecting coffee or is coffee more yeah, still in? So, so the, um, the this is a this is a big deal like obviously there's been this fight around climate change is climate change real is it not blah 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 right well the fight is kind of over because climate change is real right so now the fight is shifted to who's causing it is it us or is it a natural process which is a whole nother level of blah 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 the reality is the reality it's something we have to do something about right and so um, right now, coffee is the first major industry to be impacted by climate change. It's about 40% decrease in production worldwide. Yeah, so it's that, I mean, and, and um, whole, cult, whole cultures of people, uh, coffee is grown in a rim around the world above the equator. So all these countries all over the world in South America, um, I believe some countries in Africa, I believe uh, some of the countries in like the areas around the Philippines and things like that, they're being impacted where this fungus is growing up because of the heat levels has risen and the fungus is thriving in the heat levels. So whole crops and whole communities are losing their livelihoods. And it's, um, so there are major groups coming in and um, you want to go over? Yeah, yeah, let's go so, over. So yeah, so there's major groups coming in to try and combat this by uh, going to those communities and trying to help them plant different kinds of coffee to combat it and trying to do more uh, different kinds of blends of coffee um, plants to try and combat this fungus. Um, they call it like red rust or something like that. And then, um, then there's like huge organizations, public organizations, one's called BICEP, and they're fighting in Washington for the big, uh, to, uh, up against the big oil in industry interests and coal interests and all those guys to try and change regulations and change laws and try and help the entire world to save us from the climate change that's already in action right now. Well, so what can we do as just 
re regular people, what can we do so, to help so out? So regular people, um, you know, I like I like Bicep because they have such massive, massive organizations with them that that is a really good bet. Um, I wrote a blog post about it, like it's um, it's like Hercules fighting the Hydra. You know, this is a champion. This is like a huge, huge um, moving train that we can all kind of jump on and become a part of. So contributing to Bicep and. Um, what, what we're doing is we're organizing a Coffee for Climate art tour where we're going from community to community to community to the coffee shops. Because the coffee shops are kind of the center of the coffee culture in a neighborhood. So if you want to get a neighborhood and an area to be uh, more knowledgeable about climate change, more knowledgeable about what's going on in the coffee industry, where do you go? You go to the center of coffee culture in that area, which is their coffee shop. And so uh, we're going to be doing art shows across the city. Uh, we're working with a organization called um, Climate Action Coalition 350 to uh, raise money and awareness for all of the local projects that are going on for climate change activism in the Los Angeles area. So right. there's a lot to do here at home that can make a big difference. So if someone want, wanted to, for example, participate in the tour, I mean, how can they contact you? Oh, um, just go to mikelani.com, M-I-K-E-L-A-N-N-I.com, um, send us a message, and, um, the, uh, and then uh, Climate Action Coalition 350 uh, is a really great place to go as well. So, um, yeah, and then as we move along, we're, if, you, uh, if you sign up for the newsletter, we're going to be um, basically broadcasting. That's one of the avenues by which we're going to be broadcasting, and then my Facebook page. So definitely. So yeah, yeah, great stuff. And I, I read your blog. A lot of interesting, not just the art. There's a lot of great art when you go to his website, but also in the blog where you talk about a little bit of like that, like the you know Hercules fighting, right, right, right. and and it's very interesting to know that you know your it's almost like your art is 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 capturing this moment right now. Right. You know where coffee exists, but you know maybe in 300 years maybe there is no coffee. Yeah. People are yeah, like, what yeah. is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's a. Uh, it, I mean, there's a danger. There's a danger. I mean, I, I think we're going to figure this one out. Like, what's interesting, we were talking earlier about the ubiquity of coffee. Is everybody in the world going to give up their coffee tradition? Their coffee addiction? Mm -hmm. Right? Is everybody going to give up that habit by allowing this climate to be destroyed? Like, it's, it's a, it's, what's, what's interesting about it, it's almost ridiculous that it's taking this, but people actually wake up to things when it hits them close to home. Mm. And if we come back to people and say, you know that, uh, that coffee cup that was 50 cents in the 50s and is $3 now? Well, now it's $15. <laughs> wow. Right? Because it's going to go broke. Be yeah, because, the, because when supply gets constrained and the demand stays the same, the price is going to go up. And, um, and or they're going to be using strains of coffee that people don't really like the taste of. So our choice is either do something about climate change or drink highly expensive coffee or bad coffee. Okay. And, uh, and, and um, I'm looking forward to a time when, this, when the coffee community, which is a massive, massive community of professionals, people who have shops, people who grow, people who roast, people who write about it, people who do artwork about it, when this community comes together and actually takes action for climate change, that's going to be a beautiful thing because it's people who are vibrant and awake. <laughs> so yeah, we need to stop the coffee price from going yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to buy it at 15 bucks. And, just... and as a nice side effect, maybe have a world that actually works for our children. Yeah. So yeah. that'd be great. That'd be great for our children to be able to taste coffee. Yeah. Yes, or, or or breathe and eat fish. Yeah. <laughs> and so Little things. Be able to drink, yeah, yeah, drink yeah. water. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Live outside. You yeah, know. Exactly. Um, yeah. So um, all those wonderful things. So, okay, great. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Hey, Appreciate man. it. Make Thank sure you, you look him up, MikeLani.com or just Mike Lani Art, Facebook. I mean, you, you'll, you'll find them. Coffee art is incredible. So, until next time, check him out. Actually, um, go, to, go to his website and check out the blog. 
That's yeah. what I suggest you yeah, do. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Pleasure, bro. Yeah.